All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. If you can hear me okay, let me know by typing something in the box there. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the trends that are happening online with AI and what that has to do with you and the ability to make money in 2024. There are some gigantic loopholes that a lot of people aren't paying attention to that if you focus can actually make you a lot of money. Let's get the light said put some light on the subject there and these trends we're going to go through are super super powerful and they have the ability to help you make lots of money now first of all what we want to do is want to take a look at these and see what's going on according to ibm trend number two they are saying people who use ai will replace people who don't now what does this mean is this something talking about careers jobs being your own business what is this about well they're talking about as a whole if you are not using AI, you are gonna get left behind. And I wanna start this right off the bat by saying, how many of you guys have struggled to use AI in 2023? Maybe this year came and went and you didn't see it coming and all of a sudden you're sitting here, the year is almost over and you're wondering why you didn't make any money with AI. If that's you, let me know in the comments, let me know in the chat box, smash a like button because we're gonna get you on top of the trend so that you can understand and how this all works. Now, another one here, they said eight AI trends to look out for in 2023 and beyond. They were talking about generative AI and different things like that. Number four, I thought was very important because they were talking about how AI is going to seamlessly integrate into our work. And they also had an emphasis on something super important that has to do with your ability to make money. Now, if you're out there and you've been following me for a while and you want to look at this, what we're going to look at is AI powered apps. I was just watching a talk from the content at scale people and they were mentioning how a lot of things are going to shift from just having chat GPT where we learn all these prompts and everything looks cool to actually going out there and having an app where you check a button and say yes I do want this no I don't want this make it this way make it more human and all different things like that I think we're going to see a lot of changes happen and if you want to stay on top of those make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to this channel because we're going to be keeping on top of all of this and not just in a fun way right we don't want to just look at okay how can I make a happy face sing and dance with AI I'm looking at this in terms of how to make money and if you guys have been following me for any sort of time this year you know that I've made a lot of money with with AI and it's in a very simple way. So we're looking at a lot of different things that are, that are coming of age with AI and how it's starting to work. Now, one of the things that I wanted to preface this training with first and foremost, because you know that a lot of what we talk about here on the channel has to do with content, right? Writing content online. And I actually came across a couple of reports that were very interesting. Number one, I came across some reports here that were talking about what is known as an SEO heist. All right, there was actually an example where someone had copied a website in the Excel niche. They went out there, they copied the website, they used AI to basically rewrite the website, and they outranked their competitor. Now, since then, we have seen a trend of that site losing a lot of rankings. We can see here, if you were to look at this chart here, we could see that their rankings dropped drastically from their height when they were using ChatGPT. Now, did they make a lot of money? I'm sure they did. Did they get penalized eventually? Yes, they did. Is it unethical to go and rewrite someone else's stuff? Yes, that's a form of plagiarism that's just not being detected. So we need to look at this and we need to understand exactly what's going on, what is ethical, what's not ethical, how can we focus on doing good things that will work. And we're gonna talk to you in just a minute. We got a lot of stuff to cover, but we're gonna talk to you about how AI, basically when you use it to become superhuman in your understanding of what's going on, this is where the rubber meets the road. Because instead of using AI to just regurgitate a bunch of content to get search engine rankings, yes, there's gonna be a problem there. And that's where this loophole is going to come about. Because when we look at things like this, with the ExcelJet website, this is actually the one that, that he copied. So this is what happened to the website that did nothing wrong, which is interesting, 
right this is where we are getting into the area of the giant loophole of what's going to happen and I've seen it before only not as big as this where what happens is you have a cat and mouse game all right first of all you have Google who ranks a ton of content okay and this isn't just about Google this trend is going to change everything now when we look at Google Google has been around for years and their goal was to organize the web's content based on what you you wanted to see. You would go out there, you would search for an Excel formula, Google would pull up a website that had a result telling you about that Excel formula. Now, fast forward to the age of AI, there are people out there that are using unethically, we'll make him look like a bandit, there's his bandit mask, right? And they're using it unethically to game the system and rank high up with lower quality or plagiarized content. This is unethical, we don't want to do it. Now. Why am I bringing this up if it's an unethical thing? We are seeing stories like this happen time and time again. Earlier this year, uh, we were talking, I think it might have been yeah, last year here on the channel, I've been doing this a while. We saw a video uh, by Matt Diggity who was talking about the Conch House interview and website. Now we had followed the Conch House website for quite some time. What these people did is they went out there, bought a domain name, okay? The domain name was huge. It'd be like if you were to buy I don't know, the, the, the Catholic Church website, right? It's a big, powerful website. It wasn't that powerful. But if you were to buy like a big religious website or, you know, something like Wikipedia, let's say tomorrow you owned Wikipedia, well, the way Google works, if you were to put junk content on Wikipedia, it would rank because Wikipedia is a big site. This is the same thing they did with the Conch House, and they said, hey, we're going to put some junk content up and rank it in Google. Much like how this guy did the plagiarism and ended up tanking both sites, which sucked. It sucked for the guy who got basically ripped off because it's like, hey, he wasn't doing anything wrong. He had worked years to provide good quality content. And these are the ethics conundrums that we are starting to look at is where does this lie? If AI can copy anything and everything, then you know what's the point of writers? What's the point of this? And those are some things we're gonna look at. Now, the loophole that is going to make you money if you are paying attention. If you're not paying attention, I guarantee we're gonna be sitting here in December of 2024 and you're gonna be like, Marcus, what happened? What happened? Why was I not able to capitalize on this? Why was I not able to make money? Now, what happens is whenever this stuff goes on, whenever people try to game the system with Google, which by the way, is a multi-trillion dollar industry. This is search engine marketing funnels trillions of dollars. And when we understand that and we say, okay, they want to do a good job because if, they, if people search, if you go to search Google, and you get bad results, then you're gonna to go to the next search engine eventually. You're not gonna care about Google anymore. So what's gonna happen here is there's going to be a big gap and there's gonna be a chance where these places are reorganizing stuff. This is happening right now. When we go in here and we look at the data and we start to understand things, and again, ladies and gentlemen, if you are not looking at the data, that's why you're not making money. I look at data, I make money. People that go out there and utilize data are the ones that are gonna get the most reward. Now, what we're talking about here is what's known as Parasite SEO. Parasite SEO is gaming the system, trying to rank on Google just for the fact of ranking on Google. They don't really care if you like their content or not, they're just there to get the traffic and make money. So when we look at examples like this here, okay, if you were to go and search in Google for X lookup versus V lookup in Excel, we are gonna see that we have several different things. There's a career principles website with little images there. We have some questions we have Reddit, which is getting a huge spike from this gap right here. And when you look at this, if you don't understand what's going on, if you were to go here and type in reddit.com, right like this, you're gonna see that the spike in their traffic has drastically gone up in the last six months. So in the last six months, their traffic has nearly doubled. Okay, so now what does that look like? Well, if you were to take the rule of thumb, which is this traffic number here, and you look at the value, 
Okay, so before this, they're saying the traffic value is like $70 million a month, and now they're saying it's worth $133 million a month. So now when we look at that, we need to understand, okay, well, where do I reside in there? Because I'm not gonna be the next Reddit, but I mean, we're talking like $200 million a month on one website. And when we have something like $200 million, right? That is a lot of money. Not to someone like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, but to people like you and me, that's a lot of money. Even if you were to take like one one hundredth of that and have $2 million, that's still a lot of money. Even if you were to say, hey, let's take, you know, 10% of that and you have $200,000 per month, how many of you guys are like, well, hey, you know what? $2.4 million a year isn't that bad. I think, I'd, I think I'd be able to get by on this amount of money. And so we look at that and we say, oh, well, that's only like less than a, 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 per, a fraction of a percent and this is the number they gained monthly by one little part of the Google hack, of the Google gap, okay? And when we understand this, type in the box if you guys are understanding it. And you're like, wait a minute. Okay, so I see the gap is here. I see this stuff is working. Now, what am I going to do with it? And we need to understand this, so let me know if you get it so far. and we will continue on. All right, just had to shut the door because apparently there are chickens somewhere yelling. I thought chickens were supposed to yell in the morning, but you know, maybe they're a little confused. Maybe they're AI chickens. But at any rate, we're looking at this and we're like, okay, we have $200 million growth. Now, what else is going on here? What are we seeing? Well, let's take a look. We see the example here of the Conch House one. You see he got a spike and he dropped. Now, according to the video that was there, okay, he basically had a September 2000, May to September. So from May to September, with AI content on a domain name they bought, they made in one month, according to the video that I watched with Matt Diggity, about $800,000. Okay, how many of you guys are like, wait a minute. Okay, so I'm seeing here there's a lot of money in this gap, all right? Now, people are using it unethically. You got 800 grand in one month from one website doing the same thing with AI, okay? Now it tanked because it was unethical, it was bad, and it's not good, right? But we see there's a lot of money there. Now, what if we wanted to do this the right way? And that's what we're gonna get to in just a minute because we're gonna see that if you were to do this stuff the right way, you can actually get rewards in a very, very solid way. We could see here, even after the tank, his traffic is worth about $12,000 a month. Now, looking at that heist and different things like that, are interesting because we look at the ethics of it and they are not good. But we also look at the flip side and say, well, what if instead of using AI to game the system, what if I used it to help me do something in a way that's going to make me more money? And that's where we get into a lot of this other stuff here where they're talking about the top five AI use cases and trends for 2024 and beyond. Now, some of these, they're talking about artificial general intelligence, okay? Talking about how is it gonna do normal things that people do on a day-to-day -day basis. We have AI for education, which is going to be huge. We have AI in software development. Now, this is one that is going to be very, very big that a lot of people are not paying attention to. Right now, I have programmers on my staff that do coding for us and build WordPress plugins they help with our websites, they build little codes for our content business, and all different kinds of things like that. And when you look at what's happening, right, we can go in there and say, well, you know, maybe I have a programmer here in the USA. Let's say you are a software company, right? Okay, and it could be something simple. It doesn't have to be a big software. It could be something very small. When you have a software company, let's say we have, you know, 10 people making $100,000 a year as software developers, okay? Maybe you have to have 10 of them on staff. With AI, one person can now do the job of the 10 people. 
which is interesting because instead of all this tedious stuff, now you are getting a better, more concise output in a shorter period of time because no longer do we have to know programming we can actually go in and do this stuff ourselves. Now, this is an example because when you think of all the programmers that are out there, this is going to change the game. Absolutely 100% this will change the game. Now, some people are going to not adapt. There was that, that article we looked at earlier where they said, you know, um, the people that are going to survive are going to be the ones who use AI, not the people who don't. Right, if you're not using AI in your business, and let me ask you guys, on a scale of one to 100, how much are you actually using AI in your business or trying to make money online? Not, I'm not talking about learning about AI. I'm talking about actually using AI. And not using it for you know, making you know, some kind of wolf that dances for a video. I'm talking about actually using it on a daily basis to get a result and something that's going to produce money. Zero meaning you're not using it at all, and 100 meaning you use it pretty much every day like we do here in our business. And I think it's very important to look at because these things are starting to change and we are seeing a shift. And as I always say, whenever things gravitate towards easy, they're gonna to gravitate to break even. Okay, very, very, very important. Now, of the people that said they're using AI more than 90%, how many of you guys are actually profitable? Type profitable in the bubble with a plus sign if you're very profitable. And we wanna look at this because I think we need to change our thinking from how this is working to looking at these big loopholes. Again, we're looking at software, generative AI for all. This is gonna be something that is gonna be adapted into our daily life in a way that was not even predicted before. It's gonna get big, it's gonna get out of hand as we saw. Here's another one where they're talking about um, the different custo bots, which I think they're talking about customized AI stuff where it's more of a customized thing. Um, they're also talking about different trends and things to look out for with business. There was one that was talking about, let's see, here, I think it was the Pragmatic Coders one. Um, it was talking about personalization and BYOAI, which is bring your own AI. In the future, people are gonna be looking at this and they're gonna be saying, hey, you know what? In order to get a job, you're gonna need to understand AI on a different level. And when you understand on a different level what you're getting out versus what you're putting in, because everyone wants to do this in an easy way, and say, give me an article about X, Y, and Z and hope that it works. And that's not always the case. We need to understand what's going on. Another one was open source, uh, the risk, right? There's a lot of risk stuff. Coding is gonna be huge. And there was another one, this one here, intelligent apps and AI for personalization. Now, this is something that is going to be a gap that a lot of people can take a look at and make a lot of money with because up until now, personalization in marketing is key. I'll never forget this. Let's, let's have a little story. Got to get my coffee for the story, right? Um, years ago when I was first starting my teaching business, and I think it was 2008, I started my teaching business teaching people how to build sites and make money and different things like that. And I'll never remember one time, or I'll never forget, uh, one time we had a launch and I was trying to sell out this new thing that I had. And um, I, I decided to do something personal and actually call some of my students and see if they wanted to upgrade. Did the same thing in 2021 where we had um, an offer where they got like a phone call with me, they paid for it, and if they didn't like it, you know, we would reverse it. If they did like it, they could upgrade. And I found out that using personalization added the ability to make way more money, right? Where with an email, where it's like, hey Bob, check out this video, all right, versus a customized one, where Bob clicks the link and goes to the video, we are seeing that it is a astounding conversion rate. I'm talking from like 1% to like 90%. When we did the calls where we'd charge people for a call, the amount of people upgrading to $1,000 or more was 90%, right? And when you think about that, it's like, okay, how can I do this on a big scale? How can I do this in a real world way? And when we're seeing 
different AIs and things, there are avenues that you guys as business people or wanting to make money or people wanting to do side hustles can now get in on that you were never able to. Right, we are looking at this and we are on the precipice of understanding how this stuff works where before you would have people who, let's say there's a guy here and he wants to make money and let's, let's map this out and show you what it looks like. So let's say there was someone that wanted to make money. Maybe he's got $1,000 to his name that he could spend on his business or whatever. In the olden days, you would have to hire writers if you wanted to blog and not do it yourself, which I mean, I'm not a writer, so I don't like doing that. Um, videos, you would have to create videos. Webinars. Um, audios. You have to do your own images. Content. Posting. And all of this stuff. And this, if you weren't willing to do this yourself, this would cost a lot of money. And even if you were willing to do this yourself, it takes a lot of time. Now what we are seeing is that we can actually literally, literally go out there. And I want some of you guys to tell me the niche markets you're in. Tell me some of the niches that, that you're working in and different things like that. And then I'll tell you some of mine and we'll go through and show you how this would work in real time. Because what we're seeing is that there are so many changes happening. Like this one here, Ahrefs talked about the Google loophole that created overnight millionaires. That's what we're talking about here. This guy was talking about the SEO heist. We were looking at some of the websites that are doing good and some of them that are not doing good after the Google changes. What we're seeing here is that there's a gigantic gap. Now, Google has come out and they've said, hey, we don't care if it's AI or not. We care if it matches what the person wants. And if we start to understand that, so let's say we have uh, Lord Sionite uh, over there, right? He says he is in web design, okay? So what we're gonna do today right here live is we're gonna show you how this would look for someone like uh, the web design guy, home cleaning tips, apps, different things like that, okay? Before where you had to do all this, or even real estate, okay? We'll show you how this works with all this stuff. So web design, real estate, we got, um, genealogy, web developer, home cleaning, different things like that. Where you used to have to go out there and get a writer and say, okay, I need 50 home cleaning tips. All right, well, there's a hundred bucks to get that. Okay, and then you're like, okay, well, you know, now I need a giveaway. So now I need a giveaway for my website. That's gonna be $250 for a custom book that talks about how to clean your house. Then I'm gonna need some emails. Okay, there's some other stuff. And this is things that up until now was completely out of reach for most people. And I know, because I've talked to most people, I've tried to help people just like you in the trenches trying to make money. And we always got hung up on being able to scale and being able to do this stuff in a real world way. Or there's people out there that are like, well, you know, Marcus, I can, I can write the giveaway or use some PLR maybe, or maybe I can go out there and I can create some content and, and put it out there. Maybe I can make a video, but I don't want to use my face or my voice. Now with AI, we have the ability to actually go out there and make video content, webinar content about this stuff. And imagine if you were like the realtor and the real estate person is like, hey, I want to get more people to sell their house, but I don't want to go out there and do this stuff. Well, you could create an AI webinar which right now nobody's doing. We're gonna show you guys how to do it. Smash the like button, subscribe. I will have a free training on that soon. With an AI webinar, what we can do is we can take the giveaway, we can take all the stuff and structure it in a way where it's going to show stuff, bring them in, and then sell your product or service or whatever it is. So if you're a realtor, it'd be like, oh, hey, you know, sign up here. Or if you are a, a web designer, hey, sign up here, do this, make this happen. And we start to understand, hey, wait a minute. Now we can see inside markets that otherwise we couldn't do. Press releases, they're a pain in the neck to write. We see here, even this site that got hit huge with a Google update. 
they are still getting traffic. A lot of people throw the baby out with the bathwater saying, oh, well, you know, they, they lost traffic. Well, some of them actually gained if you look at it in the big scheme of things. It's very, very important to understand how this works as a whole. If you were to look at this article, which we talked about a couple months ago, with the Google update, they actually went through and looked at who the winners and who the losers were. What kind of sites did good, what didn't? We saw that Reddit was key. Well, what does that tell us Google wants? Well, it tells us it wants the human touch. Now, can we add that with AI? Yes, I think we can. Now, this is going to take a little bit more work. If you're out there watching videos that are like, hey, click the button, the AI will literally go get you money, right? So far, I haven't seen an AI that does that. If you do, let me know, I'd like to talk to it. But right now we are seeing, hey, you know, most people don't want to do the work. Most people look at this stuff and they're like, well, you know, Marcus, an AI webinar, you know, buddy, that's gonna take me all day to make. Right, it might take you eight hours to set up an AI webinar. All right, eight hours. You'll be like, wait a minute, dude, what are you talking about? I don't got eight hours. I'm supposed to make money every 10 seconds. That's what, that's what the YouTube videos said. All right, well, let's say you spend those eight hours and you make a somewhat decent webinar, right? You go over to ChatGPT or Bard or whatever your favorite program is. You have it write a webinar according to a topic based on data, right? This, ladies and gentlemen, listen up, is the power of AI. What everyone's missing while they're looking at cute stuff, making a bunny rabbit wear a, a clown hat, right? Nobody cares about that. What they're missing is the ability to have it do the legwork. Did you know that right now while you're watching this, you can do the legwork of like 50 people using AI? Think about that for a minute. If you were able to go out there and say, hey, wait a minute, let's get this webinar done. It used to make long, it used to take a long time to do a webinar from nothing. Now, I could literally go out there and make it work in a very, very simple way, okay? Uh, Josh says, yeah, but I can beat the SEO Moodle. I don't know what an SEO Moodle is, but you know, okay, there you go. Um, again, we need to look at this and that might be a loophole. We need to understand, hey, I can be more productive. And this is something where, I mean, I've done this in my own content business where we are writing content for businesses. We just started um, our content strategy service, which we started it with articles. Now we are pretty much um, content profit strategy. Now we are pretty much full service, right? Where we're actually going out there and we are able to create blog posts, video content, email, giveaway books, and all kinds of things where before we weren't able to do this. I just didn't have the manpower. There was no way to be able to do this. And I got to tell you, it's one of the most profitable things I've ever done. And when we start to look at this and we understand, hey, wait a minute, let's see what's going on. Because again, ladies and gentlemen, if you are paying attention, if you are paying attention, you need to be looking at the data. What does the data say? Because the data doesn't lie. It is truth. It could predict things. It could do everything. And now, let's take a look at what the data is saying. How many of you guys are ready and you're like, okay, we are going to use this in a very specific way. All right, so the data is saying, Metafilter.com, which is a, I think it's a site that, like it's a, a user-generated content kind of deal. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Metafilter.com. Oh, I think I spelled it wrong. Metafilter.com. There we go. Um, yeah, so this is like a human um, edited, user generated content kind of thing. So if we were to go to like the Ahrefs keyword tool and look at what this has, right, like this. Okay, Josh says, all you have to do is place your ads at something on your, oh yeah, talking about pay-per-click. And that is something we are gonna get into because paid traffic 
if you know paid traffic, it's going to be a game changer for 2024 because that's a skill a lot of people are going to need if their regular traffic starts to take a dive. But here we see this one. Now, MetaFilter is a little bit different because um, it does have some, there we go, it has some subdomains as well. Um, but we could see that it's ranking for all kinds of different things. It, it's, it's doing really well. Like, why would it rank for a Murphy bed or whatever? And it has all kinds of different things that it's ranking for, much like kind of a Reddit kind of deal. And we're starting to look at this and understand, okay, great, we have these different things that are going on, we have traffic that is working, and, and different stuff like that. Now again, we are seeing that sites like this are getting a boost. Why? Why is Google looking at these? Because if we can understand why Google is looking at certain things and why some content gets, gets preference over other content, then we can start to look at this as a whole and make it work in a big way. Now, there is a big trend I want you to look at that came out of literally the woodworks, and that is the Timu company. Now, Timu is a shopping site. It's got a bunch of weird stuff on it, but what we saw is that this shopping site literally came out of nowhere and became a powerhouse, right? They, they rose 94% to like $10 billion. That's a lot of billion dollars, right? And we start to look at this and say, so what, is, what does that look like in terms of search, because again, ladies and gentlemen, if you were to look at how Amazon got big, Amazon, there we go, they got big by Google SEO. I would venture to say, and I'm sure people will back me up on this, Amazon would not exist if it wasn't for Google's search engine. Okay, now, would they have used a different search engine if Google wasn't, yes, they would have, but I'm telling you, that is how they grew. Okay, they grew because there was a little gap in the search engine that said, hey, if you had content about these products, it'll work. He chose books because books have lots of products and lots of, um, lots of SKUs, right? Lots of search traffic, which is crazy, okay? Uh, a lot of people say Timu's an untrustworthy. Yes, I don't know if they're trustworthy or not. I've never used it. We are talking about how they grew, okay? So we're gonna look at how they grew and we see here, they grew very fast. Look at their search rankings. This is one year. In one year, they went from literally way down here, nothing, to 15 million visitors a month from Google for free looking for products. Okay, think about this for a minute. How many of you guys are getting this? Okay, how many of you guys are like, okay, let's put the business aside. I don't know if Timu's reputable. I don't, it, it, that's irrelevant, okay, because we're not talking about copying that business model. What we're talking about is where this works, where this works. And we're like, wait a minute, here we have this, and it's growing and growing and growing huge, okay, in all the mess around Google. Now, they did take a little hit here for like five minutes, and then they bounce back up better than ever before. Imagine your website going from nothing to 15 million visitors a month, literally overnight. Then we start to look at this here, medium.com. Medium is getting a huge boost. Reddit, huge boost, okay? So we start to look at this, and we're like, wait a minute, we are seeing stuff work really well. Now, bestlawyers.com, that one went down. Why? Again, ladies and gentlemen, if we can understand this data, how many of you guys are getting it and you're like, okay, this data is making sense? Reddit, personal interaction. Medium, personal interaction. Timu, all about uh, uh, buying things, okay? And we're starting to look at this and say, okay, where is this going? Quora, huge uptick. JPost up and down, but still okay. Then we're starting to look at this. Here's another one. This was the guy who did the SEO heist, right? He went out there, shot from zero to 100,000 views or, or 100,000 visitors a month, pretty much overnight, and then it dropped. Why did it drop? Well, there's rumors that maybe there was a, a manual um, penalty or something like that. And we start to understand, okay, now I need to get where this is going. 
what's going on here? And we start to look at where AI can help us out. When we look at this, we need to understand, okay, we can have AI help us with content, regular content creation. We can have it help with um, different things like this. Here's another guy. This guy, I uh, just watched a video earlier. Um, I forget where it's at, but he's got a, he has a pretty good video, a smaller channel. Great video on how he was affected by the Google update. And we start to understand, well, let's take a look at something here. And I want to bring this up because a lot of people are talking about a recession in 2024. How many of you guys have heard of that? How many of you guys actually think there's going to be a recession in 2024. Let me know, and I'm going to find another notepad around here. All right? How many of you guys are like, yeah, I, I've heard about it. It looks like all signs are pointing to a recession. Okay. So a lot of people are saying there's going to be a recession in 2024. Now, in the recession of 2008, how many of you guys remember that? 2008 recession, housing prices went down, people had very little money, and they were freaking out because, okay, my house that was worth 500K is now worth 200K, and I can't even sell it. Right, so uh, Lord Crypto says um, he's seeing it already. Yes, a lot of people are saying there's going to be a recession, and I think there kind of has to be because inflation has gone crazy. Maddie says when people can't afford to spend, yes, unless pricing trends down, which is probably not going to happen. Uh, they just increased my rates. Economic indicators are strongest in years. Exactly, right? So we're looking at it, and we're like, okay, I think there is an up and coming recession. I, I think it is on the horizon, okay? What happened in the recession? I know if you were watching the news in 2008, they acted as if there was like a rapture of money and all the money magically just drifted up into recession land, right? That's how they asked. And they're like, hey, they acted like, okay, the money's gone, okay? Money, contrary to what people believe, is not made and it doesn't go away. It shifts, shifts hands, okay? I bring this up because right now, even though there's a recession most likely going to come, I'm not an economics expert, but I do like to study that in my spare time. What's happening with Google and these other things is a gap. All right, now when you see a gap and you hear things, oh, Google made my traffic go down, Google made this happen, Instagram changed this, you can't make money with this anymore, and all these things are going on. Like Jim says, right? Opportunities in a recession, exactly. So all that's happening in the last recession, that's where a lot of the billionaires got their many, many billions. Right? That's where they got it. Like, look at the history. That's what happens. The money doesn't go away. It shifts hands. So the question is, with Google AI, with all these people trying to get the rankings and Google combating and people losing rankings, did people stop searching Google? No, they didn't. The same amount of people search the same stuff on Google today as they did five years ago. Maybe different stuff now. Just depends on the time. Right, so it didn't go away. Much like the money in the recession didn't go away. If you wanted to get money in the recession, you just need to go do services for people who have money rather than trying to go to people who don't have money. It's very simple, right? And now with this gap, we're like, okay, so let's put all this together. I can use AI to be superhuman. I can go into markets and I can help people with the aid of AI. Where before, I had to be a writer, make a webinar, do videos, audio, all this stuff. Now I can utilize this with AI. Where you talked about bringing your own AI. Okay, this is, it's going to exist in every job. Like eventually, when you go on your job application, it's gonna need to say you know how to use AI because nobody is going to want to pay a non-AI worker in some of these jobs when I can get an AI worker that can do five times the work. Okay, does that make sense? We use this all the time where, you know, before we would do keyword reports for sites and it would take a painstaking amount of time. I'd have to teach people to be creative, which took a long time. Now we can use AI to help with that process. 
Okay, very, very important. And we're like, okay, this is looking good. So if I was out here and say I was in the web design market, the real estate market, I can go out there and I can create good things. I could compile things. Um, I was just watching a training from um, Matt Wolf, who has a fantastic AI channel, and he keeps on track of all the AI stuff. And I had asked him, I said, hey buddy, you know, how do you stay on top of all this stuff? Because it makes my head spin. I don't know which AI tools are there, what's coming out, how do you do it? And he's like, well, I have a little trick. I use AI in this certain way to get this data. Okay, so imagine if you're out there and you're like, okay, well, I can literally go into any niche. I can say, what are the top AI tools realtors are using in 2023, okay? Very simple. What are the top things? We can go out there and we can put things together in a very, very simple way. Uh, Kester says, can AI write human-like content or AI detectors too powerful? Well, those are two questions that are kind of unrelated, right? Like, can AI write human-like? Yeah, it can. Are AI detectors too powerful? Well. If you want a human-like piece of content that doesn't get detected by AI, I don't know. I, what I've found is AI detectors are actually pretty terrible, and they flag stuff that's not AI. They, it's just kind of all over the place. Um, but see here, what we're doing is we're looking at this, and we're like, okay, here's some good tools that AI people are using. Or if you want to get more specific, well, let's say we want to do what are some good AI RSS feed tools I can use to stay on top of specific news. Very simple. And now we're looking at this in a very, very specific way. Uh, Joseph says, my car insurance just doubled. They cited the economy as one of the reasons why they doubled my premium. Yes, insurance companies are going crazy right now um, with that type of stuff and what you can do uh, Joseph, is you can, you can realize that people feel the same way, right? Watch this. Let's say I wanted to go out there and go to uh, ChatGBT-powered uh, Chat um, AI here, right? And we go here, let's clear it out. And I say, please find some articles on, or let's do, please find some news reports on how insurance prices have gone up in the last three months. This is gonna go through and it's going to find specific stuff, right? According to CNN Business, um, it's gone up 19%, biggest increase since 76. Uh, Confused.com says it went up 58%. And now I can go through and I can make a very specific piece of content on this stuff, right? So now I can go through and I can say, okay, well now I can make a video about insurance prices 2023. Now I can go here. Do you know how much money insurance ads trigger on AdSense content and stuff like that? So I could literally go out there and say, wait a minute, maybe people are looking at this and they're looking at car insurance and now we have all these videos on car insurance and how it's gone up and we can talk about this stuff in a very, very simple way, right? And now I have these articles, I could talk about it. What are some ways people can save money on car insurance, right? Now we're going through and we're like, okay, what's happening is we are now able, it's if you're paying attention, ladies and gentlemen, if you are paying attention, we can actually have AI be like our personal assistant. I want you to go find this information for this stuff in a specific way. And one of the things that I'm doing right now for my videos and stuff, I actually got these two pieces of content created for today's call right here. And these were AI generated, right? So we had this one. I had my outsourcer go out there and create this article, let's see if we can get you a better picture of it there. This article on uh, Parasite SEO and how it's being affected with AI. And what's happening here, what's happening is we are seeing a huge, huge, huge influx of content on the internet from AI, 
right? It's like where last year there were probably you know, a thousand articles on a certain topic. Let's say we were to go here and say um, planet fitness, total body enhancement or whatever, right? Last year where you might look up this word and see, okay, well maybe there was, uh, you know, a thousand articles or 50 articles. Now what's happening is with AI, you're getting way more content, right? And you can do this by searching in quotes, just keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down until eventually it's going to time out. Notice, look at all this AI stuff here. This is leaving a gap where it's like, okay, Google's like, dude, this stuff is junk. It's still ranking, but it is junk. So what do we do about that? Well, as I've said time and time again, and in the age of AI, this is going to be all the more important. If you can be 10% better than whatever else is out there, you can get 90% of the rewards if done correctly. Now, again, this is something that's elusive. Are there YouTubers out there that make videos that, in my opinion, aren't good in the make money niche? Yes. Do they get more views than me? Yes, that's a gap. Now, for me personally, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lower my ethics just to get views. That's not what I'm about. I'd rather get people who want honest, good information and focus on that. And if we do that with AI and we're like, okay, well, now I can go out there. Instead of trying to do, let me get 10,000 articles and spit them up on a site like that, Okay, you can do it. You might make money quickly. Is it ethical? Well, it's a, it's a gray area. But what if I took my time and did better? What if, and this is my whole idea, what if I went out there and I said, you know, most people are just getting traffic and trying to convert. And ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about another story here. We're going to get the coffee pot and talk about another story, right? Uh, maybe we could go to this other camera. Yeah, let's see, let's switch over here. Um, but years ago, when I was doing um, my business here, let's see. There we go. I think this camera is okay. Uh, years ago, when I was uh, first starting my business, we had uh, automated content generators and things like that. And we did, you know, not the greatest of content, but we, get, we did get a lot of traffic. I knew how to get traffic and we'd put things up. Some of the content was good, some of it was mediocre, some of it completely sucked. I was just learning and was kind of feeling out how the stuff worked. Now, since then, Google's gotten a lot smarter and, and people have, have understood what they want and different things like that. But I remember when we were doing that, we got hit by a Google update in 2004, 2005. And my income literally went from somewhere around $1,000 a day down to like $100 a day. And I was like, yeah, that, that kind of hurts. And so what I did is I started learning about paid traffic and I would buy traffic. Now, what I learned when I bought traffic was the value of each visitor. This is something that in the age of AI, people are not going to get. Because when you look at the value of each visitor and you say, well, you know, this person here searching for, you know, whatever it is, maybe they're searching for, um, let's see here, what do they rank for? Reddit's going to have some colorful stuff. So let's say they're searching for Planet Fitness Total Body Enhancement. Okay, there's 13,000 people a month searching for this. Now, in my mind, I'm like, okay, these are people that may or may not want to sign up for Planet Fitness. That could be worth money. They could want to sign up for a gym. Now, most people are going to look at that as maybe a junk piece of content. Maybe maybe like, okay, Planet Fitness Total Body Enhancement, what is this about? Is it valuable traffic? If I add this video, what, what's going on here? Okay? And what I would need to do is treat each article, each keyword as value. Right? How do I take that and say, well, there's that's 13,000 people instead of just, oh, hey, I got 13,000 views. In, in the world of, of internet stuff, a lot of people look at views and they think that is the be all end all. Like, okay, if I could use ChatGPT to get a lot of views or a lot of people, okay, that's gonna make me money. Well, yes, but you can also make a lot of money with a lot less. You could also make a lot of money with a lot less. And I think this is super important and something that people miss out on. Again, when we're talking over here about 
the numbers of what's available, right? We're looking at it and we're saying, okay, well, you know, that one example gained $200 million worth of traffic a month. Okay, well, and again, that's according to Ahrefs, which is kind of like using a, a, a social blade, where it's just like, okay, it's a penny a visitor or whatever. It gives you an average. Okay, it doesn't talk about what could be, what could be. And when we talk about what could be, we need to understand that something like Plumber Orlando is eventually going to result in like a $1,000 or $10,000 plumbing job. Okay, so it's not just about the $10 click. It's about the bigger picture. And when we understand, oh, okay, the bigger picture is total body enhancement, what do they want, right? Headwear or, or dress code or whatever. What do they ultimately want? And how do we make this work in a way that we do the best we can? That is where you're gonna stand out to Google. That's where you're gonna make a lot of money. Like Matt says, it's very true that you don't need a massive amount of people. And it's, it's very true. I mean, when we look at it here, I look at other uh, people that do videos and, and have channels in the same niche, and they're 10 times bigger than me. They got, you know, a million uh, subscribers or whatever, and I, I watch their income reports, and I'm like, we're kind of making the same amount, and I get 1 50th of the views that you get. Okay, so when we treat this different and we understand what's out there, now we start to get it. And that's why, you know, when travel bloggers come to me and want help, I'm like, you need to make content on travel rewards credit cards. That's where the money's at. You know, how do I backpack through England? I don't know, do people backpack through England? I don't know what you do there. I get fish and chips. But you look at it and you're like, calm down, the jokes are free. But we look at it and we're like, okay, you know, how do I take something that's seemingly mundane? How do we do it? And Jim brings up a good question or a good, good suggestion. He says, if you want to fireproof yourself against the changes in SEO, you should build yourself an email list. That's why we were talking about this over here, right? When we go through and use AI, right? When we're using AI and we look at this, now I can create a giveaway, right? So now I look at this in a very specific way and I say, I'm going to make content with AI. All right, maybe I'm gonna go out there and say, let's make content for how to go to the gym or, or let's do keyword explore. Maybe we're gonna do workout motivation, okay? You look at something like workout motivation. It's got about 8,700 searches a month. Okay, not only that, but I'm sure if you look at um, YouTube, I'm gonna do it off screen because some people that work out like to, they. Yeah, I will just look at it off screen there. Uh, but for workout motivation, okay, this looks pretty clean here. Um, we got 1.2 million views seven months ago, 140,000 views one month ago, 20 million views, 8 million views, and on and on we go, workout motivation. So if I was to go out there and say, well, how do I use AI? Five years ago, 10 years ago, I'd have to do all this myself. I'd have to go and search workout motivation quotes. That's gonna take me days. I'm gonna have to build a website. That's gonna take me days. I'm gonna have to figure out what content to put on the website. Now, with AI, I can have it do a lot of this. I can have it build me a giveaway. I'm like, okay, let's have it make a giveaway of you know motivation, workout, uh, let's do this. Let's say, watch this. Make, always say please. Please make me a motivation, workout motivation, sample weekly guide with quotes. Okay? So there's our, our workout motivation. There's the quote. Here's Tuesday. Right? How many of you guys are like, wait a minute? So this is something we can actually do in a very simple way. And now, if you want to make this to stand the test of time and make it through 2024, what we're going to do is we're gonna turn this into multiple pieces of content for the same type of keyword, right? Think about it, we're like, okay, this is gonna work in a very, very simple way. Okay, 
very simple. And we're like, okay, check this out. We have uh, rest and reflection. It's got little quotes and things like that. We can even go through and make an Amazon book on it, right? Here's an Amazon, you know, um, workout guide. But what we need to do here is we need to understand that the key is in understanding how to use AI. If you don't understand how to use it the right way, you're gonna struggle. We need to look at this and understand, hey, this is as a whole. Content is about a strategy, not just putting junk on the web. There's plenty of junk on the web. Like, I, I'm not gonna have trouble getting a workout motivation guide, right? If I go here and I'm like, workout motivation, weekly guide, I'm sure there's tons of them. Good housekeeping, very well fit. You gonna compete against these guys? No, you are not. Can you do something on Pinterest? Probably, all right? Can I do images? Yes, I could. And can AI make them? Yes, it can. So when we understand that it's about seeing in the market and seeing what's out there, okay? Much like when we were looking at VLOOKUP versus uh, XLOOKUP, right? We look at that and we're like, okay, you have Reddit there, but you also have video, okay? Which now, a lot of you guys can do video now, okay? Very simple. Then we have uh, Excel Campus, Reddit, another Excel one, Go Skills, and on and on we go. And we're seeing that a lot of these sites are doing a lot of this stuff. Now, a site like makeuseof.com does get preferential treatment from Google because they've been around a while. They are seen as an authority. This is a site about making use of different things. They got a lot of traffic. Now, did they get hit? Yeah, it looks like they did. Why? That's a question I wanna know. Where did those 3.2 million visitors a month go? Because if they came to me, I'd be putting a lot of money in my pocket. How many of you guys get that? They're like, dude, yeah, totally. Like, okay, if I figure that out, I'm going to win, right? And we start to look at this and we're like, okay, we take a look at this, take a look at the keywords they have, and we look at like who owns Twitter, how to block on TikTok, and different things like that. Okay, AirPod case not charging. Okay, so they rank for that. AirPod case, LifeWire, Apple, discussions. Okay, so we're seeing this here, make use of. What if I could do better using AI than these other sites? What if I could do a better job of that keyword? Um, ChatGPT AI, and then just find exact local security, something, uh, AirPods again, hair, hardware accelerated GPU, right? And we're starting to see, okay, what if I could go through and find something better? Maybe there's an app for you know, uh, this here or whatever it is. And we start to understand, wait a minute, this totally makes sense. Because now, instead of trying to do everything, because most people are gonna go out there, they're gonna do, here's all the keywords, AI, go do it. Okay, they're not gonna care. Google's gonna be like, yeah, take a hike. But they will like it if you start to use the different things we're talking about. Get a domain that has rankings. Utilize it in an ethical way. We looked at that in the beginning where we were talking about, um, we were talking about the people who did the Conch House site. Okay, their, their traffic dropped. They made 800 grand, they took a hike, their traffic dropped, it was unethical, it was junky, it was bad, it was spam basically. But can we learn from that? Because what if that site was about a certain topic? What if it was like my client's site for Moshecons and we went through and we made specific emoji stuff, right? This is where we bought it right here and it's coming back with all AI content, right? We bought it right around, I think it was, yeah, August is when we started putting traffic or putting uh, content up and we're starting to bounce back. And that site wasn't super expensive. It wasn't super cheap, but it was like two grand. And I buy sites like this all the time. Another one I bought recently was WPCity.com, which was for um, WordPress stuff. Right, these are sites that it expired. Google sees them as relevant. What I'm doing is they, they hit here, they're doing good, they expire, we buy them, we build them back up. I haven't put a whole lot of content on this one yet, um, but it, it is starting to rank for the stuff we are putting on. And again, a little audience can make a lot of money because uh, when we look at Bluehost SEO, 
Okay, well, hosting pays a lot of money. So it's something that we can do in a very specific way. I can also go through and now have AI create videos on it. I can go through and make a guide of how to use WordPress. I could build a mailing list. I can send them to other stuff that is going to make me money. And we start to look at this and we're like, oh, okay, I see how it works. We can go back and say, well, maybe, uh, you know, maybe a year ago, let's see what it ranked for, what we can build it up on. Had 33,000 keywords in Google a year ago. All I need to do is build this content back up, right? I just put the content up right now. It's not there because we haven't put it up yet. But we're going through and with AI, we are seeing that this stuff is not hard to do, right? Now I can go through and make an AI post like this about Genesis versus Astra. And we look at this and it's like, okay, that's a good piece of content. And when we look at understanding the intent and what people are doing and why they're doing it and how to make good content based on what they want, because there's this theory out there that the idea of AI is to make it super easy. And my wife and I always have this debate. She's one of those people that's like, she wants to go to Google and type in, how many eggs do I put in my cake? And it says four. Like, I want a little bit of, you gotta finesse me a little bit. I'm like, hey, tell me about why eggs work in the cake. Tell me about this, tell me about that. And I think the majority of the people do want a little bit of backstory. And we are seeing, okay, so if the theory is correct, that AI is gonna be there to say, what's the best bike to go long distance? the Huffy 5000, if that was the case, Reddit would not get a spike in traffic. Because Reddit's, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been on Reddit, but you ask a question and you get 5,000 answers. Some of them are garbage, some of them are good, but you're gonna get a lot of answers. It's not a yes or no kind of thing. However, they are ranking for a lot of um, yes or no type questions. Right, and what we're seeing is this was very similar to what was known as, um, what was this known as? It was known as something, uh, the, the featured snippets, right? And what you're gonna see is with Reddit, okay, they rank number four for chat GPT, why? Why would Reddit rank number four for chat GPT? What does it have to do with anything? Okay, why would videos rank? Why would this rank? And we're starting to realize, okay, so we're seeing there are different modalities and different things that people want and different things that people are expecting. And when we can do that, okay, maybe the best bike for a long ride, maybe someone in you know, uh, North America is gonna have to go over hills more than here in Florida where we ride on sand, might be different. Um, Jim says, sorry, no, I can't stand the recipe sites that give you their life story before the actual recipe. Okay, and I'll tell you, I'm a different type of, of cook. For me, I don't look at recipe sites for a recipe. I look at it for an idea. I look at it and I'm like, oh, cardamom with pork? Ah, good idea, let me try that. I'm never looking at it for one cup, two cup, put the sauce in, which is different. And, and when we look at that, we need to understand what is working where. And if we were to do, let's say, um, Jamaican oxtail, stew recipe, I made this last night, it was pretty good. If we were to go Jamaican oxtail stew recipe and we look at what's working, because one of the things that we are gonna need even more in the age of AI is the ability to look past what we want. The ability to look past what we want and look at the data of what's actually working. If you've heard nothing yet on this training, pay attention to this. Because if you look past what you want and what's working, that's going to be key. A lot of people say, oh, well, Marcus, you know, um, I need to rank in Google because that's what the gurus say. Well, is there not enough traffic on Bing for you to make money? Right, think about that for a minute. What if your inability to make money is because you're looking at the wrong thing? And I'd venture to say, and it probably is. What if it all boils down to looking at the wrong thing, right? As business owners, one of the hardest things we do is having to make a decision on where to go and what to do when, 
right? I'm gonna go on YouTube, I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna go on Pinterest, I'm gonna do this. And a lot of our actions are because we are listening to other people rather than looking at the truth. And if you get past that, and a lot of it is getting past my own thoughts, realizing that, yes, Marcus, you've been doing this 23 years, and every time you turn around, something new comes along and makes me feel like I don't know anything, which is fine if I'm willing to grow and look at what's out there. Because somewhere out there, there is a place that would love the content that you're creating with AI. You're just not posting it there. What if all your efforts you're putting into everything is not the right thing? What if there is a better way? And that's what we want to look at here because when we look at it, we say, well, you know, I don't like the recipe sites that have the life story and the pictures. And, you know, my mom made this and here's what they look like. I know what these look like. I'm going to cook them. Tell, just tell me what I need. That's what most people are going to say. But the fact of the matter is, She's making money, you're not. Hmm, interesting. So are you literally telling me that Google tells you on the home page what they want? Exactly. And when you look at the data, there's Reddit again, there's New York Times, here's some videos. So we're seeing exactly what they want and so many marketers are trying to use ChatGPT and AI to buck the system and put a square peg in a round hole. And it ain't gonna fit, no matter what you do. A couple things might work here and there. But if you wanna be in this for the long haul, I've been doing this a long time, we need to look at what out there is actually working. Why? How did they, how did they fare, right? How did she do in the Google shakeup? Is this kind of thing working anymore? Let's take a look. We put this into our um, keyword tool here. Take a look at how the overview, apparently she's ranking for the oxtail. So she actually did really good. So the exact thing that most people said they don't want, which is life stories, then recipes, is exactly what Google said, well, let's give her more traffic. Let's give her some more traffic, right? That's what we're looking at. And we start to say, okay, well, it looks like after the updates, she actually did good. So now I can look at the data and say, well, why is this working? Now, ladies and gentlemen, up until now, we weren't able to do this at the level we can today. Because with ChatGPT and AI, I can go through, I can take something like this, and I can say, well, what was that about Google? Some kind of Google thing there, right? Um, I can go over here, I can clear this out, and I could say, please tell me why this page would rank well for the keyword, what's the keyword? Oxtail recipe. Because I mean, there you go, there's, there's uh, 104,000 searches a month for that. That would be some money if done right. And we start to look at that, we're like, okay, here we go. We got this stuff here. <laughs> Tara, glad you're here. Thanks for uh, the kind words. Style Trader, sorry, AI is here to stay whether they like it or not, just like Bitcoin. Anyway, it's, uh, AI is supposed to assist people. Exactly. We are letting it assist us. Check this out. User engagement. Interesting. Most SEOs won't tell you that. They're like, oh, you got to have the keyword, got to have the meta tags, got to have chat GPT. You need more content. They got 3,000 words, you need 10,000. You need to have the history of why oxes had tail and why you need to cook them or whatever, right? And so now we're looking at this and it's like, okay, comprehensive content, keyword usage, user engagement, and positive feedback. Okay, so those are elements that are working well. So how can I utilize that in my own stuff, right? And we're gonna see this come up a lot with people using AI to get that feedback and understand things and get people to understand what's going on. And when I mentioned earlier that you can use AI to create webinars and trainings and different things like that, it really is game over for those that are paying attention. 
there's going to be a window in 2024 where people are going to be able to tackle this stuff in a real world way. Um, and if you want to follow what I'm doing and, and see what I'm doing, I'm very transparent about it, right? You guys see my, my content business here and different things like that. Um, you could go to blogprofitnetwork.com, sign up. We have calls every week where we talk about AI. We show you how to use it. We show you how to do blogging, SEO. We're literally showing you how to use these tools to make a living. Now, are you guaranteed to make money? Of course not. The average person trying to make money online makes nothing. Even though there is this huge gap, a lot of people are not going to pay attention to it. And even some of those that, that will pay attention to it aren't going to utilize it the way that it's meant to be. This is time to look at it and say, if you're going to be serious about this, it's time to go all in and make it work. It's time to stop messing around and say, okay, how do I get these tools to use what I want? Can I make an AI update or where, where it's talking about the news in a specific thing? Maybe it's talking about how AI affects crypto. Maybe I'm talking about how AI affects real estate. I mean, think about this. You could literally go out there and someone will make a living talking about how AI affects real estate, okay? They're gonna go out there, artificial intelligence takes over real estate, that's two years ago. I'm sure now it's a lot more prevalent. Look at this, okay? Hey, who's that guy? That guy looks familiar. But now we're looking at it and we're like, okay, how to use ChatGPT as a real estate agent. Are you guys seeing where the, oh, wait a minute. This makes sense. Because now I can go through and say, okay, cool. Let's go to um, Google Bard or ChatGPT. What are some ways people are using AI in as realtors? Please list 25 use cases. Okay, watch this. We can go through and we can get this in such a specific way market analysis, analysis and prediction. Um, let's see, it's, it's thinking. You know you get a good one when it, when it starts thinking, or it's just tired, I don't know. Right, personalized property recommendations, virtual tours, 3D images, automated property valuation, smart lead generation, fraud detect, all different kinds of things. So now I have a, um, a setup of 25 things. So I can literally make 25 videos on how realtors are, well, apparently 23. All right, we'll have to ask for two more, right? Um, and I could go out there and say, okay, great. Um, what are ways they are used, or let's do, what are some realtor AI tools? Please name 10, okay? Do I think AI will close banking jobs down? I don't think AI is going to take away jobs. I think it's going to make more opportunity for more jobs. Because when we start to look at this, are things gonna go away? Are programmers gonna be worried because AI can do programming? Yes, but you're still gonna need a human to do it. Like, if we wake up today, AI is just gonna sit there and wait for someone to tell it what to do. And so what we need to do is we need to understand what to tell it what to do that's gonna work aka 10 most popular AI tools realtors are using right now. There's a bunch of them. If we were to go out there and look at this and say, okay, well, let's do keyword explorer, AI realtor, okay? Uh, AI realtor, AI real estate, okay? AI in real estate, there you go. And so we start to look at this and say, okay, now I can go out there and make videos on how AI is affecting the real estate interest industry. I mean, literally, you double down on that, you do it all the time, you should be able to make money. Disclaimer, most people make nothing that try to make money online. But when we understand, okay, this is something that, yeah, I can use this, and then I can show, I could be an affiliate of these programs and, and whatever, and we're starting to understand, okay, this is going to make us better where before I might just have, oh, here's some ways to promote your real estate. Now I have news and stuff that's coming out every single day and I can build and grow. And I'm sure that there's lots of channels and, and lots of content out there about these things, right? ChatGPT, real estate, and now we start to look at it. We're like, okay, uh, let's do 
Boomtown AI lead generation platform, okay? I'm sure people are searching for uh, Boomtown and different things like that when it comes to AI. And we start to look at it and say, okay, this is all starting to compile and, and build, and maybe I could do how AI is going to affect banking. And it will, right? One of the biggest gaps is going to be, let's go over to the whiteboard again, or the uh, paper, right? One of the big gaps is going to be, we're gonna have to use this here. We're, we're getting creative there, right? Running out of paper. I think I got some paper in the other room, but what are you gonna do, right? One of the biggest gaps is going to be uh, AI news. Right? AI news is insane. I gotta be honest with you, I missed this gap. I didn't take as much advantage of this as I could have in 2023. Now I did look at it a little bit, I did make some money, did do pretty good, but I, my eyes weren't open as much as it was to all the tools that came out. In 2024, I'm quadrupling down on this. Something I'm doing, why? Because there's money there. How is AI going, how will AI effect, right? How is AI going to affect this industry, the car industry, the uh, airline industry? How is it going to affect everything? And if you can stay on top of this stuff and start to understand, hey, wait a minute, there's a lot of things here. There's a lot of stuff people are looking up when it comes to AI. You look at Boomtown, there you go, tons of stuff. You look at uh, AI news, right? This stuff is literally going crazy. Look at that, April 2023. It's going crazy right now, just going through the roof. And we start to understand, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I can do this. I can do this in a specific niche. How is AI gonna affect restaurant owners, retirees? How's it gonna affect driving? How's it gonna affect this? Some people will make a lot of money with this, and this is a gap that people are missing. They're not understanding, wait a minute, I can take advantage of this in a, in a real world way. I can go out there and I can create content or uh, stay on top of things. And then what do you do, right? You link it all together and you say, okay, well, like here, go to download my notes to get the notes from this video. Once you go there, you're getting notes, you're getting things, you're on my mailing list. We have webinars, which again, you can do this all with AI. We have a team here uh, in my content profit strategy business. We actually started this week making videos. Right, so we have blog posts, we have video content, we have content that does a, a giveaway book for your, your business, we have email promo content, and we're literally building this in a really easy way. Now, right now, a lot of these things are in infancy, right? So video generators, they're not good. We've, we've put it up against human intervention AI, and it's not that good, right? Um, I think AI itself will make prompt engineers very quickly. Engineers redundant. Yeah, I think prompt engineering is going to change. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's so much about prompt engineering as it is understanding how to speak with AI. Because like if you had an employee, right? This is the, the thing that happened with, with outsourcing years ago. A lot of people wanted outsourcers and they expected the outsourcers to just make a money. They're like, go make me money and then they go broke because they're like, I'm paying these outsourcers, but I don't know what to tell them to do, that'll make me money. And that's, it's a big round robin. Same thing with AI. If you understand what you need AI for, then it's a game changer. So if I understand, okay, well, I'm going to stay on top of real estate news. Great, excellent. Please tell me how programs, like number six, follow up boss, help realtors get leads. This is going to give us something super specific and notice how I'm letting this guide me, right? Because all I'm doing is I'm, I'm the director, right? Like in a movie, the director isn't the actor, the studio, he's not everything. He's just directing it. I'm directing AI. Um, Follow-up boss isn't directly a tool like this. Here's how it helps. Great, thanks. What are some alternatives? Boom, see how I'm guiding it? I wouldn't know to ask that. Like I, there's no prompt that's like, now find alternatives, now do this, and now because it said this, do this. 
right? Very, very, very important. And we start to realize how this is working. Now I got alternatives. Great. Now how would I use site 15 ways Boomtown to get leads? Right? Then I make a video. Here's 10 ways to use Boomtown to get leads. And what we're doing is we're piggybacking on things that already have traffic. And if you didn't watch Monday's video, um, I don't know where Monday's video is. Let's see. Well, if I click that, it's going to play this. But Monday's video was about um, this exact topic. It's like, hey, there we go. Uh, here in Italy, these are difficult discussions. I should... I, I don't know, the little happy face was in the way of that. Let's see if we can do it. I should um, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, watch the channel because we're, we're going to do that. Or blogprofitnetwork.com is a great place. If you guys want to follow my stuff, Blog Profit Network is extremely inexpensive and you're able to ask questions live on uh, Tuesdays, we have calls where I go through and we break this stuff down. We have recordings of all the calls. Sometimes we'll have special calls about video creation or this or that. Um, and it's something that's very, very uh, specific. Josh says you still have to teach it proper data correlation and that use is relevant. Um, exactly. And that's the thing is like, how do we go through and look at this? Okay, now please make a table of the top real estate methods to get new business, right? And it'll go through and it'll do the work for you, uh, which is really cool. And when we understand, okay, what am I doing with this? Because what I'm doing is I'm always thinking a step ahead. Like, okay, why do I want this content? Is it just to rank on Google? If that's your answer, get in line. Get in line. It's, it, AI is going to beat you out because you're going to have people doing a better, uh, a better uh, result. Max says, are evergreen niches a safer bet? Evergreen niches are elusive, right? Is there really an evergreen niche? I don't know. Is health an evergreen niche? Sure, but health is always changing. Is finance an evergreen niche? Yes, but it's always changing. I would stay away from that. What we want to do is we want to get away from marketer buzzwords. There are marketers that give you buzzwords because they want to sell you stuff. It's fine, whatever. Hopefully their stuff's good. I don't know. But the buzzword is not the business. Like if you're looking for an evergreen niche because some guru told you you need an evergreen niche, you're not thinking about the big picture. You're not thinking about the business, right? Someone says green tech is a good one. It could be, maybe, maybe not. We want to look at where is a gap. That's what I'm about. Is there a gap in the market? Well, real estate AI, I think there is a gap. Let's see here. Real estate AI is medium, so not too bad. Let's try something like Boomtown Real Estate. Okay, medium, not bad. Generate real estate, or let's do real estate leads. Real estate leads. Hard, expensive. Good. Wait, Marcus, did you just say that expensive and difficult is good? Yes, because it shows me there's money in the market. Are we going to use this to get traffic? Probably not. We're going to use the AI stuff to funnel traffic into this stuff. Does that make sense to everyone? Right? Like if I talk about a bunch of tools for making content to make money online and point to web hosting, web hosting is the competitive expensive one. That's where I'm leading them. Right? And it doesn't matter how evergreen or buzzworthy or whatever this stuff is. What matters is, is there a gap? Can I provide good stuff to the people? Right? If I'm going for gym motivation, is there a gap in that one? Well, from what I saw on YouTube and different things like that, yes, it looks like there is a gap. Looks like I can get in there somehow, some way. Right? And now we're understanding, okay, I see these things that are happening. I can put them all together, and again, I know a lot of people come on here and they're like, Marcus, you know, you need, you need to teach more in your videos. There's a lot of videos here. If you're new, smash the like button, subscribe, watch the other videos. They are meant to go with everything. And when we understand, okay, there is going to be a big shift in how content is created, how content is served, how we search, 
right? There's going to be a shift where at some point we might use AI rather than a search engine for certain stuff. Um, William says, define what you mean by a gap. I mean something I can do, right? If I go out there and I say, well, you know, stock market is a good niche. It's got a lot of money. Okay, stock market, okay? That's not a gap. Super hard, a lot of traffic, a lot of money, difficult. But where would the gap be? The gap would be, hmm, maybe I can do AI stocks. Here's a gap. Do you guys see that? How many of you guys are like, holy crap, you just showed me a gap that is someone's probably going to use, someone probably did use to make millions of dollars or maybe at least a million. Talking about AI stocks, right? ChatGPT, we're going to use to help because I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. I don't understand the stock market. I'm terrible at it. Never ask me for stock advice because I don't know it. But I can go out here and say, what are the top AI stock picks that went up in 2023? Watch this. So now I can make content on the top AI stock picks that went up in 2023. Great. Now list 25 more. Okay, and we wait. Specifically, ones heavy in AI. And let's see how it does. And sometimes you have to ask it twice, like that. So there we go. Now it's telling me these ones. Now watch, it's a big, Self-serving thing, iRobot, okay, so now I can do iRobot stock, 4,000 searches a month, Boston Dynamics stock, you got 3,900, how many of you guys are like, oh, that's the gate, that, or the gap, um, Josh says traffic is great, but you still have to get them to buy the product, no, not necessarily, if you have content that's talking about this stuff, you can get paid just for ads, and you can get paid a lot for ads. Stock market stuff pays a fortune. Um, in this market, I would probably just, I'd probably do um, Motley Fool as an affiliate product because it pays well, and I would do ads because the ads will pay a fortune. And there are people with stock channels that make more money than celebrities make. Um, and, and it's pretty straightforward. Right, hey guys, we're closing out the year with the top 25 stocks. Here we go, these are the ones that had AI. And we could talk to them about, okay, well, now please add to the list why they grew and how much in 2023, right? Um, Josh says, I'm not a financial advisor. This is for educational purposes. Well, looking at that, you don't have to be a financial advisor. All we're doing is saying, here's the stocks that went up, right? If I say, now you should probably buy this one because I'm, you know, Mr. Guru, then you get in trouble. But if we're just saying, hey, these are the ones that went up, here's the data, right? Maybe you could be the stock data guy. All I do is look at data. That's it. I'm not going to comment on the data. I'll just tell you that Teradyne went up 35%. Why? Because of the increased demand for test-powered AI equipment, right? And we think about this like, whoa, wait a minute. This totally works. Uh, Josh, as far as disclaimers, it depends on the content you're doing because there's some stuff you just can't disclaimer yourself away from. Like if I say, this is not advice, and then I give you advice, that's not really a disclaimer. That's like, okay. How does that work? So we need to look at that in a, in a different way. But again, all I'm doing is sharing data. Today, we're going to look at the data. I'm not going to tell you what to do with it. I'm just going to give you data. Uh, Style Surrender says, if you're creating good content with AI assisting, the website viewers will mostly stay on your website longer instead of bouncing quickly. Exactly. And we start to look at this and understand, hey, this is cool stuff. Just give them the facts. There you go. Um, exactly. And then I can go through and say, well, um, now I make now 
I don't know if uh, Bard does images, but we could actually go through and say, now make a chart of these ones that went up, right? And this could be a video. I mean, if you don't want to do your voice, you could do AI video voice, or you could hire someone to do it. Um, very simple. Now with AI voice, you do run the risk of not being able to get paid monetization on videos. But I mean, think about this. What other faceless YouTube guru is telling you, hey, you could just make data on stocks and get paid big time. No, they're too busy saying, you know, show a picture of the grass growing and you'll get rich. And it's like, yeah, but I don't think there's many ads for like grass growing or paint drying, right? Now, is there something you can do? Like we did one on waterfall videos, which tied into uh, incense waterfalls, which was a product which tied into an affiliate offer that worked. And we were making specific data points and decisions based on those data points, right? Stocks, why would I do that? Because there's money there. There's a lot of money there. I just share the facts. Here we go, AI stocks. And I'll bet you there's someone doing this. AI stocks. Watch this. Um, two days ago, uh, 2024 AI boom stocks. Top two stock market AI plays. Um, seven, best seven stocks for AI. Here's another one. On and on we go. Works like crazy. And when you start to understand, this is about strategy. And that's one of the things that we do. Like when you look at my content profit strategy business, which is becoming crazy popular now. Uh, we actually had to shut it down because so many people were ordering, um, but it's open again. So if you guys want it, you can check it out. What we do is we literally give you the keys to the kingdom. If you came to me and said, hey, I want to be in the stock niche, we would find the gap and show you the stuff. And we would also get you the content for it. So like I would go through, I'd do this research, I'd find out which ones work, and then I would get content on them in a very specific way. Right, this is something that if you think about it the right way, it's literally game over, you win. And that is the gap that is going to be there. And the gap is going to be absolutely huge. It is a loophole that anyone can take advantage of. And when you understand, oh, now I get it. AI is going to make, make me better and able to do things that I normally wouldn't be able to do. This is going to allow me to get in niches I wouldn't be able to get in, to create content I wouldn't be able to create, to do things I wouldn't be able to do, and to make more money than I've ever been able to make because it's going to do the work of a lot of people. And right now, in my content profit strategy business, we have, um, I think we're up to about 13 employees on that business, and those employees, their job is to work with AI to get content, where I used to hire one employee, and they would write this and it'd take them, you know, three days to write something like this. And it may or may not be good. Now I have a team of 12 people that are coming out with anywhere from one big piece of content to 25 little pieces of content in a specific way, which basically makes me multiplied. And then I could say, okay, well, maybe I'm going to have someone who all they do is turn this stuff into Pinterest. And then all they do is turn this stuff into video. And all they do is X, Y, and Z in a specific way. But unless you find that gap, unless you use the loophole, you're gonna struggle. Uh, how do you fact check AI information? Actually on Google, so right here, you can click double check response and it'll actually fact check itself. Um, you could also have someone else fact check it, like you can have a fact checker, so here we go, here's the results. There we go, bada bing, bada boom, fact checked it. Um, is this one fact checked? I don't know, you know, you could, you could do it yourself. Um, but you can go through and you can look them up on your own or you can have a fact checker do it before you, you do or ask it for 50, fact check it and you'll probably end up with 25 that are fact check. You can see here out of uh, the 25, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I got 15. So if I had 50, I'm probably gonna come up with 25 that are fact checked, um, which is pretty simple, right? And we're start, we start to look at that and it's like, okay, well, what was this, right? This training, I looked at a lot of news stuff 
about AI, about what's going on with AI, the updates with AI, and, and how it works, and that's where we came up with the content for it. I mean, the news doesn't create their own news. It's stuff that's out there they are talking about commenting on. Um, and when we start to understand that AI can help us, like how is it gonna affect the news industry? It's gonna be insane, because now you can have AI out there looking for stuff all the time, all day, every day, um, and getting you the info that you need so you can report on it, which is pretty cool. Check out blogprofitnetwork.com if you want to be on calls every week and learn about AI. If you want us to set up a, a niche for you and, and help you, you can check out highticketniches.com. Smash the like button, subscribe. Check out downloadmynotes.com for all the notes from this training, including links to the news reports and all kinds of different stuff. And I will see you in front.